computing power, memory, uh, the power of it in silicon has been doubling every 18 months. And is it slowing down or changing? Yes, silicon, we've got to the point where you, unless we make it subatomic size, we're going to get to, a, you know, so small that we can't make it any smaller to make a processor. But there's quantum computing. There's mm -hmm. other things coming on. So anything that you think of as having limits of storage or processing power or whatever, just going to, you know, keep on getting better exponentially, mm -hmm. whether you want it to or not. And so it's one thing to count on. So, hey, going to school and getting a good job as a civil servant, maybe something's going to change and we're going to eliminate that job. Uh, you know, planning on, planning on helping people, going to, your, the technology is going to change, but people is not. Mm -hmm. uh, people is not. Boy, I guess it's still <laughs> early here. People are not. Right. Um, and, you know, I, and, and Madison, I just finished a book about... Uh, the technology in medicine, half of the book from this guy who was a tech, a doctor tech expert mm -hmm. is caring for patients and what he's going to be able to do when they can, when the doctor can finally learn some bedside manner. Um, <laughs> the, the, there's studies that show that a doctor stopping and touching the patient uh, while he's, while he's examining them, getting them ready for surgery, whatever, has a very positive effect. Can you mm -hmm. call that placebo effect? Who cares? It's a positive effect. It works. Uh, the reason why doctors come in and stare at the chart and, and mumble something and leave is that they're very busy. Mm -hmm. But when they don't have to do the reporting, when all of that's uh, all recorded and everything, it's not a matter of we can fight over what that record is. It's that he no longer has to spend you know half of his time doing record keeping, and he can actually focus on spending a few minutes with the patient. And yeah, the robo surgeon is going to help him do the surgery better. Uh, the diagnostic stuff is going to help him get a, a better di diagnosis. But um, I think we're an awful long way away from having a robot come in and say, you have cancer. Here's what we're going to do about it. Right. Um, you need a human to do that. So the human jobs become, um, become more human. Mm -hmm. And if your job is not dealing with humans, you might want to look at doing something else. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what, what's fascinating about, let's say, like the last, our current conversation right now is that you are a, a wealth of information in a number of emerging technologies and industries. And I, I'm fortunate in Boston, and then I get to look at a lot of these firsthand at the, mostly at the startup level. I'm curious about where you find your information. Because much like you said, like, so the problem with AI, AI and it being biased, the problem is garbage information in, garbage information out. So where, where do you look for? Are there people? Are there books? Are there articles? When you're, yeah. like, when you're getting in, in interested in a, a new emerging technology, or even now, like, where do you go for your valuable information that allows you to speak so eloquently on multiple types of, of industries? Uh, thank you for the elo <laughs> eloquent. Um, <laughs> if I could learn how the difference between is and are, I'd be doing. It. I, I mean, guess, you know, that, that's guess, a that's a morning thing, but that's okay. I guess it depends on what the what your definition of is is. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, actually, um, I uh, absorb as much media as possible. I okay. flash back to a time when Wired magazine was brand new. Mm -hmm. And they interviewed uh, Penn, uh, Penn and Teller, mm -hmm. and uh, and they showed an office, and he had three TVs on. Um, this goes way back, you know. Cable <laughs> hadn't completely taken over yet in the early '90s, right? Uh, but he had, you know, tuned to news coverage, to uh, media, to whatever. He just had them going all the time, and I and I tried to do that. I found out I couldn't get cable installed to my office um, <laughs> and back then you wouldn't have done it on the internet it just wasn't enough information right uh, I mean, it wasn't fast enough but the idea was that um, you wanted to consume as much as possible which is make him you know generally smart about stuff I right. you know I, I think it's not a matter of IQ um, you know pretty sure I'm blessed with a good IQ. I have nothing to do with that. So mm -hmm. I don't consider that a brag. Um, 
But outside of that, I just, you know, I read, I watch, I see things. I watch mm-hmm. hours of television every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I wish I could say it was all good stuff, but I think I just <laughs> quoted something that, uh, t- today that I learned on YouTube last night. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, Singularity University, TED Talks, uh, you know, and, and wild and crazy documentaries and, oh yeah, podcasts. There's a whole lot of interesting people out there. I talk to the Uber driver every time I, I get in. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm making that mistake again. I said every. It's possible <laughs> the deaf driver I had and I had no conversation. So it's not every Uber, uh, mm-hmm. but close to it. Um, and, and sometimes I ask myself, what? The idea of taking an Uber is I'm supposed to be able to like get some work done or check my phone and get car sick and, or just rest my weary head. And, you know, and sometimes I get in thinking that next thing I know is I'm having a conversation like this, telling stories and getting to know the person. Um, one of the big things I learned about blockchain came from a Polish guy uh, who lives in uh, Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason I found out he was Polish is I asked him about sending money. Um, and he sends money home to Port, to uh, to uh, Poland. And I asked him how much it costs. He said, I don't know. <laughs> and, and, or it depends is what he said, actually. Sure. And, and uh, so we tried to figure it out. He said he had sent $500 and it cost him 45 Neither of us had any trouble figuring out the math on that. Mm-hmm. But he didn't know. He had never taken the time to figure out it was 9%. And that has affected me in so many ways, that conversation. One, we should be able to wire transfer funds now at a half a point, a point. It should not be 9% or 25% like it is if you want to wire money in Africa. Right. Um, you know, and how can an economy thrive if we have that kind of a friction? Um, and, and so you, th- you hear about one thing, you try to apply it to other things. And then, as I said before, very careful not to say, well, I need to read up more about why the, you know, this clown in, in office is so bad for us. I know that. It's, it's fact. Um, you know, some of the silly things, some of the jokes I watch, I learned a lot from watching jokes. Mm-hmm. Actually, I got into late, very late last night, watching an hour interview with Jay Leno which I didn't know the guy was doing public interviews, let alone doing stand-up. I kind of assumed, but never yeah. thought about it. Oh, yeah. And, oh, wow, he has some interesting things to say. The headline was, why Jed, Jay Leno will never do a comedy special. And hmm. <laughs> I'll let you look it up if you want to know. I won't tell you. Yeah, but, I definitely uh, will. I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess it's probably similar to why other comedians, established comedians, will also not do yeah. that anymore. Right. But, but I'm gonna, some do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they do. I just, I just binge watch everything I could find with Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. I've never been a big Jerry Seinfeld fan. I'm, of course, I like him, you know, it's, but, you know, um, I didn't have to watch every episode of the TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, I, watch. I do remember. That was one of the last things I actually watched where I tuned in at the time I was told to. Um, there's one that's <laughs> a, a, a future thing that's a trend so long coming binge watching Mm -hmm. we want to turn on the tv and watch what we want to watch um you know i'm going to look at pictures of my grandkids not yours Mm -hmm. um you know it's (laughs) like uh, i care about what i care about okay and even though i'm saying i try to be open-minded and go through as many things as i can end of the day you know my my grandkid is the best Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's <laughs> like, so that's what I'm going to look at. Why would I want the TV to tell me when I, some guy in a suit in Manhattan decide what time I want to watch my favorite show? It's crazy. Um, yeah. and I, I've dropped, uh, I dropped normal cable, uh, over the air cable TV and I worked in broadcasting and I'm pro advertising, mm-hmm. but you know, I dropped sitting there watching, being spoon fed the, uh, the, the entertainment and news or whatever at, at a certain time. I dropped that in 99 with uh, TiVo. That's now hmm. 20 years. Yeah. And, you know, and, and back then I was pushing the limits of what I could get in my house because I saw that as the future coming. Mm-hmm. And just last week, 
I hear the uh, the big announcement about about uh, Disney's new channel. Mm -hmm. uh, they're pushing it on us and and saying that oh no, Netflix has got to wait. Actually, it was the HBO one that came out. They said, and they're going to release shows once a week uh, because this idea of binge watching is going away. Yeah. By the way, you don't. When I refer to binge watching, it doesn't matter whether you watch the whole series at once or you watch it whatever. It's when you want because nobody. Nobody watches 200 hours of, of a show, um, you know, <laughs> without getting up from their chair. Right. Um, and so I, I, I do a lot of binge watching where I watch episode after episode and I find it, it's great. It's what I, it's my escape. I get mm -hmm. to live in another world, but watching British drama because uh, uh, I just finished a police procedural. And, and the idea was, I was there with them in that situation. I know that it's fiction and it's not real or something, but I was able to escape, play with that, then it was okay. It's why we like science fiction and other things. It's that, you know, it's, it's, you can fantasize um, in a good way. I'm not fantasizing of, you know, dating <laughs> a robot. Right, right. No, I, I get that. Your, so your, your background is in communications. I'm, I'm curious on, because so many people, in different industries are kind of looking at, let's say going to school now and whether or not it's, it's valid. And, and, and that's not the conversation I'm necessarily interested in, but I'm interested in, so your background communication, how has that either helped or hurt your now current role as a, someone who's looking at the future of different technologies? Oh, it's everything that's ever happened to me has brought me to where I am. And when I can let go of, trying to hold on to any of that and just mm -hmm. go where I go. It's, it's okay. You can't regret what you've already done. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, I think uh, learning to communicate is vital. Um, we still don't have uh, enough talent in writing and communicating and CRPs. In fact, that's the thing I, the, the thing that gets me steamed when I start seeing people yell at, at each other on Twitter mm -hmm. um, is the, uh, um, is the fact that just some of it is just so like illogically dumbly written. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about grammar and do another is our mistake. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but um, but yeah, it's that sort of thing, and it's 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 not that they're just so wrong, you know. That oh no, the planet, the ice caps are not melting. That's not. It's not about the fact. You know, it's, you know, I mean, it's okay. I don't dispute facts. If you right. give it to me, it's okay. But the illusions that we have, that we have everything absolutely right when there's so much that we don't know. And I think um, that's where my education helped. But, you know, um, I've been out of college twice as long as the age I was when I was in college. So, you know, most of what I've learned in life has been after the formal study. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I stopped learning it when I got, got out of school. And I think that's pretty well a dying thing. But, but then again, network TV executives keep think we're going to sit in front of our TV at the time they tell us. Right. Um, but, uh, by the way, exception sports, you know, can't, you can't have a game and, and bet on it if, if people are going to watch it at different times. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Fine, you know, and politics, you know, you don't want to watch, uh, or actually try it sometime. Uh, there's a political commentary show I, I found interest. The guys are interesting the way they talk about it. They pretty much don't care about the outcome, but are talking truly about the politics mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and political process. And I went back and watched their current show from two years ago. Um, and, <laughs> you know, they're talking about this election coming up and this is going to be, and these people are getting all excited about this. And it's just silly when you put it in context. But, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I was talking about communication. Yeah. Well, my no. ability to communicate is because I clearly stay on track with just one topic <laughs> at a time. Exactly. Exactly. There's just so, so much it, information. It hasn't stopped, stopped me from going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So with, with everything that you have done and ex experienced so far, I know that you mentioned before that your like, main goal in looking at the future is keeping a level head. How do you do that? Into, so for people who 
do watch to say the news a lot and the political climate is all over the place and that hasn't really right. changed much but how do you in your own life keep a level head keep looking you know five ten fifty